Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information. The Troglies Guitar Show, the new and improved Fender Friday. That's right, I'm now going to start documenting Fender guitars. But we're also going to take some Trade Tuesday elements here. So if you see a Fender guitar that I'm featuring and you want to trade me a different Fender guitar for it, you can do so by emailing me at treytrogly at gmail.com. So to start things off, we're looking at a brand new current year model 2019 Fender Rarity Series Stratocaster. Essentially, every year Fender does something special in a limited edition run, and this year it's called the Rarity Series. There were three Telecasters, five Stratocasters, and a jazz bass in the lineup this year. They're basically boutique level instruments with exotic woods and either custom shop or custom pickups. Take far too long to go over the differences of all of them, but I do have this video that that will show you all of them. But if you want to check out previous year collections, they did one called the Parallel Universe series last year in 2018. Everybody remembers the Meteora from that one. And the year prior to that, there was one called the Exotic series. My favorite of that one has to be the Malaysian Blackwood Telecaster. So let's go ahead and jump into my first impressions of the Flame Maple Top Stratocaster. The first thing that really jumped out to me when I opened the case on this one was the body's finish. It's this like dark brown mocha color, but I wasn't exactly 100% sure of the specs of this instrument just by looking at it. Doesn't this look like a Koa top to you guys? Because they do have a Koa top one, but this is actually the flamed maple top. But just this dark brown color, they've stained it with that really tight flame. I mean, it does move when you get it in the light just right. But then once I picked it up, felt it for a little bit, strummed a few chords, I noticed the rosewood neck. It really jumped out at me because I love rosewood necks. I had a PRS that had it once and that guitar changed my life. Anytime I see a rosewood neck, I think of that guitar and go, oh yeah. But here's the thing, this has a really thin satin finish on it, so it's not highly glossy. And at first, I didn't really like that. Because as you're playing it and you're looking down at it, where the neck meets the body, you have this whole satin gloss kind of clash look. And I didn't really like the feel of it. But something else that kind of made me sad is the fretboard, despite being absolutely gorgeous and being stock as flying maple, it's got the same thing. And my favorite thing about maple boarded Stratocasters is that goopy finish that they put on them. I don't know, call me crazy. When I pick one up, I want to feel that goopiness on the fretboard. <laughs> so I was really disappointed when it was satin. But again, maybe I'm just a weirdo. <laughs> The next thing that caught my attention was the laser etched Fender logo. How cool is that? It looks great in photos and when you get the light on it just right, but once you take the light away, it kind of feels like you're playing a parts caster. And that's not going to stand out on stage. People aren't going to know you're actually playing a Fender if that's important to you. So I tried to brainstorm some ideas of how I would improve this because they only do this on the rosewood necks. My first idea is, well, maybe they could just do it deeper so it stands out a little bit more, or maybe even put some sort of a die on it so you can actually see it at all angles. But then I got another idea that I would love to see in the future. What if they take a very small flame maple veneer, lay it over the headstock, and then do another rosewood veneer right over that? So as they laser etch the Fender logo, what they'll do is expose the maple veneer underneath. You still have the whole wood thing being laser engraved, but then you would have flame maple exposed Fender Stratocaster. Oh. And an added bonus to that is then the headstock would look like it has a thin layer of binding around it. I think that would really tie in the whole look of the neck onto the fretboard as well as onto the headstock. But while we're speaking about colors anyways, it seems in the unboxing video of this one, a lot of people thought the, the colors just didn't match. I mean, you've got the alder body, right? It kind of looks like mahogany from the way they stained it. That matches with the neck, okay? But then you've got the fretboard kind of clashing with the finish here. Maybe what they were trying to match was the fretboard with the pickups and the knobs. And, you know, maybe from this angle, it'll look like that. But in person, they don't match too well. The pickups kind of have this mint green color going on. Whereas the knobs and the switch tips and this little wang bar tip, those all match and they're more creamy and they look good with this. I think they just should have uh, toyed around with the color of the pickups. 
I had a lot of people begging me to swap the necks between these two guitars. Hey, get this video to 1500 likes within three days. I'll do it. That'll be another Fender Friday episode. We'll play Neck Swapper. And to be honest, I had the same first thoughts, but the more and more you look at it, I think the more and more you appreciate the different colors within it. So I'm not necessarily gonna go on the record as knocking the color combinations, but they are a little bit weird at first. You gotta visually get accustomed to it. But the one last final impression that I wanna talk about here is the S1 switch. Remember, this is the very first one I have ever touched. Basically, what this is doing is it's splitting the humbucker so you can still have a three single coil pickup Stratocaster if you want it, but you can also have the humbucker tones in the bridge. But you push the inside of this knob kind of like a push-push pot, but it's just not the whole thing. But I find if you have fat fingers, sometimes you can't actually get it. And I find it's because the skirt is just a little bit too tall. If that was sanded down just a little bit, I think even fudgy finger guys could still get that. Maybe that's by design though, they don't want you to accidentally hit it. But I find I have to use my pinky finger to always get that. So yeah, those are my first impressions of it. I mean, it feels like a good Stratocaster. I don't have a lot to compare it to, but let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench and talk about its specs. Inside the Rarities Flame Maple Top Stratocaster. You know, I was kind of surprised when I took this pickguard off at just how disgusting this looks. Yuck. <laughs> that is some ugly looking finish in here. I mean, I'm not dissing Fender or anything. That's just what it looks like all concentrated together. Probably mixed with some shielding paint too. But as usual, Fender has these little barcodes in here. That's really helpful. You can just email them that code and they can look up the body to make sure, you know, it actually matches the neck, things like that. In this case, they call it an American Body Pro Strat ALD FMT for Flame Maple Top Gold Burst Urethane Paint. I'm not sure what these other ones are for, but they're usually loose when you open up the cavity. So I think in the future, those will just disappear. But it looks like they've grounded things off right there. Pretty basic in here. But now let's look at the pickups. The neck and middle are Fender's Pure Vintage 65 style. And then this is what they call the double tap humbucker. But what's kind of interesting, do you see this factory error here? I did not put that screw there. This must have picked somebody's workbench part up. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and take that out. I'm not an electronics wizard, but essentially what they've done here is they've wired this pickup up in a way that it has multiple leads coming out. So when the S1 switch right here is not on, this is just acting like a normal humbucker. But when you press it, instead of just, you know, splitting the coil in half, what they've actually done is they have like extra windings somewhere that aren't normally in it. Like for example, these are balanced when they're together, but when it's split in half, this is actually hotter than it would normally be. So it's like a really hot bridge pickup is essentially what they're doing. And in order to activate that, you just simply press down on that. It's just a little switch. Neck pickup is 5.92. Middle neck, three. Just the middle, 6.09. Humbucker and the middle, you're at 3.48. Just the humbucker, you're at 7.85, but then once you do that S1 switch, here's how you see it's not exactly half of that. So we've got 4.31, so normally that'd be 8.6. That tells you about 1k ohms hotter than just splitting it in half. And just for fun with that and single and this, you get 2.55 as compared to about 3.5. I would have never guessed that's what the S1 switch looked like underneath though. That thing's massive. Other than that though, you just have two regular pots. I'm not really sure what this circuit board's doing here. I haven't seen that before. And just your regular five-way switch. But the pickguard itself is kind of cool. It's got that tortoise shell on the top, but then you have a white, black, and white layer. So it's a four-ply pickguard. That's actually kind of cool. The additional white layers kind of match the pickups as well as the fretboard. Something else you'll notice is if you wanted to put a humbucker in the neck position, you could. It's pre-routed for that. And for the tremolo unit, they're using the two-point synchronized tremolo with the push-in arm. This is the first push-in arm I've had. It works great once you get it in, but then it's not like you can't adjust the tightness or anything as far as I'm aware. And to get it out, it's kind of tough. You got to use two hands. It's possible I'm doing it wrong, but once you plug it in, it just stays put because it kind of rests right in there. So despite this one looking like Koa, it is a flamed maple top, nice and tight. But I think what you're really curious is, is just how thick is this top? 
To be perfectly honest with you, it's a lot thinner than I thought it was going to be. I thought for sure that this was going to follow like the contour of the body and like start right there. That way it'd be easier for them. But this is what I would just call like a flamed maple cap. It's not quite as thin as a veneer, but it's not necessarily like a huge top by any means. But it does kind of give it a cool little binding effect along here. I'd say it's about two tenths of an inch thick, something like that. Moving on to the neck here, spec wise, again, you've got the flamed maple fretboard, which looks absolutely beautiful. But notice also black pearl inlays. This is not something I was expecting. I didn't even notice that they were anything different until I got the strings off and really started looking at them. That's a cool little spec. But the frets on these guys are the narrow tall ones. I seem to like them from what little I've played this guitar so far. They're also saying this has a compound radius, which means it's more rounded feeling right here. So you can play chords nice and easily. They're saying around nine and a half. Then it gradually gets flatter as you go up here to make bending and solos easier to a 14 inch radius. And here's where you can see that the fretboard slopes off and is ended. And then this is the skunk stripe. It's made of walnuts. It's this cool blend of dark brown, light brown, and this mapley creaminess. It's some truss rod adjustment action right here. And then, as we were saying before, the laser etched Fender Stratocaster logo utilizes this style of string tree. They call this neck profile the Modern C. So we get a nut width of 1.67 inches. Then up at the 12th fret, it's just a little over two with a first fret neck depth of 0.84, and that then increases to about 0.93 at the 12th. So not a huge neck by any means. And it utilizes the typical 25 and a half inch scale length for fenders. Moving on to the back here, this is a two piece alder body. But man, they hit that seam line really good. If you get in here with the light, you can see it right there. But as you follow it up right here, I mean, that's a really good match, but you can just barely see it once again at the end here. The dark finish definitely helps hide it, but underneath the back plate cover, this is what the tremolo unit looks like. Looks like we have black springs. And similar to the pickguard, it's four ply. The strap buttons are the large fender style one located in your usual locations. And your serial number for this one is on the back plate. LE for limited edition 07128. Looks like you've got your micro tilt right there. And then moving on to our rosewood neck. Solid rosewood with a skunk stripe of walnut. Such a beautiful sight. I love it. I wish Gibson would do a limited edition Les Paul like this. And we've got our Fender tuners. All put back together, it weighs about eight and a half pounds. Eight pounds, 8.2 ounces. But let's go ahead, plug it in and talk through the tones. Neck pickup sounds like this. Neck and middle. Just the middle now. Middle and bridge and humbucking. Now the bridge and humbucker. Now we've got the S1 switch, which turns this into that overwound single coil. Then our last tonality is middle with the single coil bridge pickup.
What are my final thoughts of the Flame Maple Top Rarity Stratocaster with S1 switching? I really adore the Flame Maple fretboard on this thing. That is one of my favorite features that I could ever have on a Fender guitar, and this one has it. But I hate to say it, even after playing it for a significant amount of time, I'm not digging the finish they're putting on this. It's not quite a matte finish. It's like a step under that. This really feels just like raw wood still. However, this feels like the type of finish once you start playing it in, it'll turn into that really nice smooth satin feel instead of this raw feeling. So I think there's kind of a, you gotta get this from being a new guitar to a used guitar to get that really good feeling. So I have hope for the finish of the neck, but you know, stock from the factory, not my favorite. I feel the fretboard shows dirt fairly easy when it has a finish like this, so definitely keep your hands clean while playing this one. Something else I want to talk about is since the frets are that narrow tall style, I can really feel these frets when I'm sliding up and down the neck. I notice it especially on the treble side. It's not necessarily that they're sharp over here, it's just they're so tall you feel them while you're playing because I'm catching them along the side. So I'm not sure if you could like bevel those even further. I'm not sure if you'd even want to, but that's just something that I noticed while playing it. And I notice a lot of pinging action going on at the nut. So I think a little bit of lubrication there would do wonders on this one. Let's see if I can get that on camera here. I'm using the trem bar right now. Now I'm stretching the strings. At first I thought it was the string tree, but no, it's the nut. So I think a little bit of lubrication there would also make this a better guitar. So that just kind of falls into minor setup work that you need to do for a new guitar. But the tones of this thing, well, it sounds a lot better than the glary, right? <laughs> the 65 pickups, that neck pickup. Mm. I love a Strat neck pickup. It sounds so ballsy and aggressive. It's just such a fantastic tone. And with the S1 switching, if you don't like having the humbucker in the bridge, you can just pretend it's not there. I almost thought it was a little bit too in your face humbucker like when it was full on. So I kind of enjoyed being able to turn that off. So it's a good guitar, but is it my favorite one of the Rarity series? No. And I think it really comes down to, I don't like the finish on this one. It's a little bit too dark. You can't really see the flame maple top unless, you know, you're trying to take a picture of it. You got the light just directly over top of it like this. And that's when you can see the beautiful flame and all that. And the mix matched finish between the body and the neck. I don't know. There's just some visual cues on this one that just doesn't really sell it for me. But as a guitar, it was great. There's just some personal preference things here. So if you're interested in being the next owner of this Flame Maple Top Stratocaster, remember, you can trade me your Fender guitars at tradetrogly at gmail.com. This is the first one up on the trading block here. I'm interested in other Rarity Series guitars. I'd be interested in a Meteora, a Jag Stang. I'm looking for the oddball Fenders, limited edition, something special than just your regular run-of-the-mill Strat. But I'll go ahead and go over the condition here. I mean, this thing is very close to new. I mean, I would say it's like similar to what you'd find on a floor model. I do wanna make a mention that I scuffed the top of the ball end of the headstock. You can just see it right there. I hit it up against my ceiling. Oops. It's not like a big dent or anything, just a small scuff line. But other than that, I noticed some like very light impressions along the edges. They're kind of hard to see, but that just kind of comes with being part of this very thin finish. But I did just polish the frets up with some steel wool, so you're good to go there. However, I mean, you might want to polish the body up again. I have played it. There's some picking scratches and some light wear and tear, but for the most part, I would say the only bad thing here as this came to me like this, there's like a minuscule ding right here. But it might bother you because, I mean, if you get it in the light just right, I mean, it is a ding. Other than that, those were the only two big major flaws that I saw. Back of the headstock, we're in good shape. The neck, also in good shape. And the body. I did not wear a belt buckle, so there shouldn't be any belt buckle rash. Let's go ahead and uh, throw it under black light just for fun here. Kind of boring, not much going on here with a polyurethane finish here. 
but the neck does do this weird glowy thing which is kind of cool i think that's mainly just the maple coloring kind of showing its stuff the nut kind of looks cool but yeah black light test not too useful in this story this one comes in its original fender case. I didn't notice anything wrong with it, but you might have some light storage scuffs and things like that. And for whatever reason, this thing is so difficult to open. You kind of got to hold it and then bump the case. That's the way both of these are. It's kind of uh, annoying to say the least. But it's kind of a cool golden interior here and you've got tons of case candy, including an original tag, which serializes it to this one, a certificate of authenticity, a Fender sticker, a Fender booklet. I guess this was originally sold by Kraft Music. They're up in Wisconsin. Another Fender lessons tag, and they give you this kind of cool little pouch thing to put all this stuff in. And that all just sleeps right inside here. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this flame top Stratocaster from the Rarity series, you don't have to trade me anything for it. It's also for sale on Reverb.com. There's a link in the description. I hope your chocolate lights enjoyed taking a look at this Stratocaster, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.